Hey everyone, one of my favorite baits to use when fall comes around is the good old buzzbait. In this episode, we're going to review some buzzbait catches. We're going to talk about different styles of buzzbait. We're going to talk about techniques to fish the buzzbait. We're going to help you get ready for buzzbait fishing this fall. Shane Flynn Outdoors, brought to you by Omnia Fishing. Experience the most personalized tackle shopping on earth. Also by Bent Rod Fishing. Get bent, stay bent. What a big girl! Come on, buddy. Nice one. Oh, yeah, nice two and a half pound on the buzz bait. Getting them on the buzz bait this morning. Look at that. Look at that fat bass right there. About a 16 inch bass, but look at the belly on that guy. It's like he's spawning. Nice, nice bass. Get them on the buzz bait. Thank you, buddy. Hey everyone, that was a very interesting uh, catch there to start the episode. I missed uh, a strike there on that buzz bait and threw right back on top of that same spot and caught that fish. Um, that is something that does happen a lot with buzz bait fishing. No, you're not catching them on the second cast, but missing them. And that is one of the reasons the buzz bait is kind of a polarizing bait for people who have, don't have confidence in it. You do get some misses um, on a buzz bait, but just like any other bait, once you build confidence in it, uh, you get a lot of catches on it as well, and I've been very successful with the buzz bait um, throughout my lifetime. I've been fishing it for 35 plus years, but every once in a while you still get some misses. But a lot of times those misses are because of me, not because of the fish. Sometimes it is the fish. But if you're interested in learning how to fish with a buzz bait or improve on fishing the buzz bait, there are a few things I'm going to cover in this episode that can help you be successful with the buzz bait if you're going to try it out this fall. And why am I saying fall? Fall is a great time for buzzbait fishing. Uh, when the water starts to cool down, which it is now here in Virginia, we're moving into the 1st of October, uh, the, buzz, the fish start moving up in the back of pockets on secondary points, and the buzzbait is just a really good bait, especially early in the morning and late in the afternoon, to catch bass and catch some big bass as well. You know, and the buzzbait stays effective in the cooler weather up until when the, you know, the water temperature gets around the low 50s, 51, 52 degrees, and then that top water bite just kind of tails off when the water gets 50 or below. But it's a really good bait that you can catch a lot of fish with. And I'll talk about a lot of different types of buzzbait here. Matter of fact, we can jump into it real quick. Um, there's several different types of buzzbaits. All of the buzzbaits all come with a propeller on them, right? It has some type of propeller that moves water um, there's two blade propellers, there's four blade propellers, this one has four blades on it, there's three blade propellers, Strike King makes one with, uh, with three blades, and then there's blades that have uh, clackers or noisemakers on it. Now this one right here is a little different, this is from Jinko. it's called the, the Offspring, I have one here in the package still, and the buzzbait hits a little spring that gives it a little interesting vibration when it's, uh, when it's coming across the water. Um, then you have some that have little clackers that hit the buzz bait and make some different noise. Um, this one here is by Booyah, uh, and that's what I was ca caught that first fish on. And they call this the squealer uh, buzz bait because it has a little bit of a squeal to it. Um, so it has a little bit of sound, but there's different types of buzz baits. Um, they come in different sizes. The blades come in different sizes. It really boils down to what you uh, want to fish with. Now, a lot of people like the the toad buzz, and I think a couple different companies make a, a buzz bait with a toad on the end of it. I, you know, I've fished this, I have caught a couple fish on it, but I, I do better on a skirted buzz bait. Um, and you know, that seems like to, that fuller object that a fish can see to grab on, I get better hookups on a skirted buzz bait. Now, for a buzz bait, what color do I prefer? Um, I prefer a chartreuse and white uh, skirt in a silver or a gold blade primarily. Um, this is what I've primarily fished with. 
in a half ounce size. I don't ever fish any uh, smaller than a half ounce. Maybe in the summer when you're the shad or skirting across the water um, or hit the surface, I might throw a smaller buzz bait, but a half ounce size is the one I like to throw. Um, the blade size, the bigger the prop, the more water it's gonna displace and potentially the more noise it's gonna make. Um, so I, I prefer a chartreuse and white. Um, I do fish a black buzz bait sometimes, a lot of times. Now this is the smaller one. This is the 3 8 ounce um, black buzz bait. Black is really a good color when early morning and a real early morning and late in the afternoon. You know, when you, especially if you've got low light conditions, um, like really cloudy, that black can really come in handy. So I always keep a black. I keep a solid white. This one just has a white prop on it. Um, white, black, and white chartreuse are my primary colors that I recommend uh, for fishing buzz bait. Uh, now, depending on the forage in your lake, you know, you can adjust that. Some people who think that you don't want to fish this primary as like a frog substitute, maybe you go with a dark green or something like that, but it's really your preference. But um, the size I would recommend is a minimum of half inch or half ounce size. And I like to put a trailer on my buzz bait. And I, the two trailers I primarily put on is either the single tail grub or a double tail grub. And this one here, I have a double tail on it. And this is the actual one I caught the fish on, like I said earlier. Uh, but a lot of times I'll just put a single tail grub on there. Uh, it does two things. It gives a little bit of action behind the skirt, but it also makes the, the bait look fuller, in my opinion. And I, I have thrown a buzz bait without a, without a trailer, and I do not get as many hookups without a, uh, a, without a grub on the back of it. I get more hookups with a trailer hooked up on the back of that. So a uh, single tail, double tail, sometimes, every once in a while, I'll do a paddle tail trailer. But again, it's really back to personal preference. Some people like to put the frog, like the Zoom Horny Toad, um, as a trailer on these as well. Um, just know your lakes and know what the forage is. If you've got a lot of frogs, you get a good frog bite, you might want to go to that Horny Toad trailer uh, as, a, as a good trailer on there. So, you know, that's the types of buzz baits. There's double prop ones as well. Um, and, you know, you have different baits that are like a buzz bait, you know, like the Whopper Plopper or the Chapo. But the key to a buzz bait, I think, I can fish this over a lot of vegetation because the hook is up, right? It's not gonna catch a lot of grass and things of that nature. And you can, you can speed the retrieve up to stay shallower. You can slow it down to get the little hook a little deeper, but you can fish this over vegetation, uh, especially in the fall around the lily pads and stuff. This, this bait just really comes in handy. You know, the whopper plopper and the chopo, those baits have treble hooks and you're gonna catch a lot of grass, but it's still great baits, don't get me wrong. But this is a very versatile uh, bait. You can fish around vegetation and around a lot of sticks. I will throw this in the middle of stick cups. It doesn't matter. You can guide this through this, the sticks and I'll show you a catch here in a few minutes with that. So very versatile bait. Um, I, really, uh, I really enjoy fishing this uh, bait during the fall. And I fish it in the early spring too when the water gets about 52, 55. That's about the primary times to, to catch a lot of bass and big bass on the, uh, the buzzbait. The color of the props, you know, sometimes they do matter. I used to prefer the gold prop over silver, but I don't know if they really, a fish really catches the color. Now the black, um, you know, it helps with the shadow. So that might, that is a factor. One of the things I would tell you though, is if you're out there buzz bait fishing and you catch a lot of fish, and this happened to me the other day, is you want to make sure your buzz bait is running straight. And what I mean by that is when you, your buzz bait's popping across the top of the water, you want the hook right in line with the buzz bait. And sometimes you'll catch fish and this will get bent. The wire will get bent and then your buzz bait's running kind of sideways. So you want to avoid that. And the way you can check it is just look, turn your buzz bait this way and look right down the shaft and make sure it's pointed right at the hook. You just want to make sure the shaft of the buzz bait is lined up with the hook and that'll make sure your buzz bait's running straight. Because if it's off and the bass comes up behind it, the less chance it's going to get that good hook up in the top of the mouth and you can miss a few, especially uh, if it's running sideways and they miss it completely. So just make sure you uh, check your buzz bait every once in a while to make sure that it's running properly. And you can tell when you're coming across the water because your prop will not be aligned with your skirt. So just something to keep in mind. So there's different ways to fish the buzz bait. So what I'll do right now is I'm going to cut to one of my preferences on a retrieve to get to catch bass on the buzz bait. So take a look at this. 
So when I fish the buzzbait, I like to vary my retrieve. Let me give you an example. When I first hit the water with my buzzbait, I want it going pretty fast, but as I come by an object like a stick, I'll slow the retrieve down and I'll speed it back up. That helps get drive this bass to come for and strike that buzzbait. You don't want to, if you want to vary your speed, you don't want to do it by using your rod because when you pull your rod, you'll be out of position if that bass comes up there and strikes. So use the reel handles to speed up and slow down. So that's just one example of the retrieve that I recommend, you know, speeding it up and slowing down the buzzbait. But some of you might be asking what kind of uh, equipment do you fish a buzzbait on? I fish a buzzbait on a medium heavy action rod um, with, a, you know, with a high speed reel. This is a Daiwa Tasha 100 with eight to one or seven to one, one ratio, and I like an eight to one. I switched this reel out. Typically, I would tell you I always fish with braid, but I switched the reel, it had mono on it. This is gonna get braid on it here after this video, actually. And a medium heavy action, because you want a little bit of bend, a little bit of play on the buzz bay, and recommend braid, because if you're fishing in heavy vegetation, you know, you wanna be able to pull those big fish out of the heavy vegetation. I, I do a 40 pound uh, gray braid on my, my reel when I fish the, uh, when I fish the buzz bait. So where are you gonna fish your buzz bait? That's, that's a good question. I get that a lot, what parts of the lake? Well, this time of year, the bass are you know, moving. They're on point still for the summer. You know, this time of year, they're kind of in that transition, as I call it, you know, September transition. I put up a couple of videos out there. Bass fishing can be hard. So the bass start moving up shallower on main lake points, and then they start migrating back into the, the, into the pockets, into you know, shallower areas, secondary points. So I always start in the morning and first thing in the morning when I'm fishing a buzz bait is I hit my primary points and then move back into secondary points. Points are a really good place to fish uh, the buzz bait and as it gets colder and the fish move back more into the pockets and then to the coves, you want to start going deep into those coves and throwing the buzz bait into the shallow water. Here's a good uh, cut of me catching one on a secondary point uh, just a few days ago. and a half four pounder the buzz bait gets them again that's what all the buzz is about nice big bass nice big bass so as you can see that was a pretty good bass there about three and a half pounder or so off that point that secondary point i you know right was early in the morning uh just coming across that point and uh that bass hammered it and that, that's typically what you'll see um with the buzz bait now you don't get something that uh, is a little different than some other top water type baits a lot of times you don't get that big explosion on a, uh, on a, on a buzz bait. You do sometimes, but a lot of times you'll just get that whoop, you'll just come up and grab it. Or you'll get look, what I call the alligator swimming at you. Sometimes you'll see them coming. Be careful when you see that, don't set the hook too soon. Wait till they hit it. Wait till you feel that one and then set the hook. The, you can easily Jerk that away from uh, jerk that away from the fish before he hits it. So just be careful on that. But one of the things I will tell you, uh, if you're going to be successful with the buzz bait, your rod placement and where you have your rod when you're fishing the buzz bait makes a big difference. Now I'm going to show you a clip here of me missing a bass on a buzz bait. 100% my fault. You can see in the video that I have my rod placement up high, and I didn't have time to set the hook, and the fish was gone. Take a look. Good. Oh man, I just missed a good one right there. So the other thing I'll tell you is when the bass are really biting on that buzz bait and you got your rod placement correct, you will get some really solid hookups. Um, you'll get it where the bass will just inhale this entire buzz bait right up until the blade when they're on it. Um, here's, a, here's a cut. Here's an example of a good hookup that you'll get when the bass are biting the buzz bait. Now he inhaled the bus bait. 
you don't miss them when they swallow the whole buzz bait. <laughs> so not a giant bass, but it's just a good example of when the bass are hitting on the buzz bait, they get it really, really good. You know, I've uh, done real well the last week or so on the buzz bait, caught some nice bass. My biggest was seven pounds, unfortunately. I had the video on, but the old GoPro was messed up and it, it came up and it didn't come out. You know, that's the luck of the fishermen, the, the YouTube fishermen. Sometimes you don't get them all, but catch a lot of three and four pounders and two pounders, and you can catch them up to seven, eight, nine, ten pounds, obviously, uh, on the buzz bait. But it's a really, really good bait. And, you know, some of the key tips I just mentioned here, you know, keeping your rod placement correct, retrieving, varying your retrieve, and, uh, you know, just thinking about where you want to fish it on those points, secondary points in the back of pockets and coves. This fall, if you follow some of these tactics, I think you can be very, very successful fishing the buzz bait. And hey, if you've never been out there and you're, you're, you're hesitant to fish the buzz bait, give it a try and try some of these techniques and see if it works for you. Well, hey everybody, thanks so much for stopping by and catching this episode. And until next time, tight lines and good luck fishing.